Hey everyone, Phil here and welcome back to the channel. I hope you will enjoy tonight's story and if you do, let me know in the comment section below if you have heard of this story before. And now let's just dive in to the story. Tucked away in the heart of Estes Park, Colorado, the Stanley Hotel commands a majestic presence against the backdrop of the Rocky Mountains. Constructed in 1909, its white Georgian columns and grand red-roofed structure stand in stark contrast to the verdant surroundings and rugged terrain. Freeland Oscar Stanley, the genius behind this architectural marvel, desired a summer retreat that could rival the luxury and sophistication of the East Coast's elite establishments. Along with his wife, Flora, he envisioned a grand hotel where high society could gather, mingle, and bask in the mountain air, away from the hustle and bustle of urban life. Crafted meticulously with the finest materials, the hotel boasted state-of-the-art amenities for its time. A novel hydroelectric power system illuminated the hotel, ensuring that it gleamed like a beacon even from miles away. Its grand ballroom saw countless soirees, where the elite would waltz the night away under crystal chandeliers. But beyond its sheer elegance and opulence, the Stanley held secrets. The labyrinthine hallways, with their endless twists and turns, bore silent witness to countless tales. Stories of love, loss, intrigue, and, as whispers would soon reveal, of the inexplicable and the eerie. The natural beauty outside might have been tranquil, but inside, a different kind of energy seemed to simmer just beneath the surface. It wouldn't be long before guests began to sense that they might not be the only occupants of the Grand Stanley Hotel. As the Stanley Hotel settled into its prominent place in Estes Park, drawing society's finest to its lavish halls, a series of unusual occurrences started to weave a different narrative about this mountainous retreat. Just a decade after its grand opening, hushed conversations began to ripple through the corridors, conversations that spoke of experiences beyond the ordinary. It began with small, almost dismissible instances, a misplaced luggage here, a flickering light there. Guests would sometimes mention hearing the soft whispers of conversations in rooms known to be empty. Bellhops would share tales amongst themselves about cold spots in certain hallways, while housekeepers recounted unsettling feelings of being watched as they went about their chores. Room 217, a lavish suite overlooking the sprawling grounds of the hotel, emerged as a focal point for these tales. Initially famed for its luxurious drapes and antique furnishings, guests staying in this room began reporting taps, turning on by themselves, or a soft knock on the door when no one was outside. Many would feel an inexplicable draft, despite the windows being firmly shut. Further stirring the pot of mystery were the accounts from children. Little ones, with their innocent eyes, often spoke of friends they played with, friends whom no one else could see. Their detailed descriptions of these playmates would baffle parents, especially since some of the descriptions matched those of former guests, long pass it away. As Taylors grew in number, the staff at the Stanley Hotel found themselves caught between downplaying the rumors for the sake of the hotel's reputation and their own uneasy. Yet, it was undeniable that the Stanley, with all its grandeur, was slowly building a reputation not just as a luxury getaway, but also as a dwelling of mysteries, where the line between the living and the spectral seemed ever so thin. Elizabeth Wilson, often fondly referred to by her peers as Mrs. Wilson, was not just any housekeeper at the Stanley Hotel. She was a dedicated worker, known for her attention to detail and her cheerful demeanor. But her fate took a dramatic turn one stormy night in the early 20th century, forever binding her to room 217. On that fateful evening, as lightning streaked the sky and thunder echoed through the mountains, a massive gas leak went undetected in room 217. Elizabeth, during her rounds, unsuspectingly entered the room with a lit candle. The resulting explosion was catastrophic. Miraculously, Elizabeth survived, albeit with severe injuries. 
The event became a significant talking point in the hotel's history, but the real story was yet to unfold. As years passed, guests staying in room 217 began recounting unusual occurrences. Unexplained phenomena, like the sensation of someone tucking them in at night, or a gentle unseen hand straightening the bedspread became common tales. Some visitors would enter their room to find their luggage inexplicably unpacked, clothing neatly stowed away in drawers. Others swore they'd seen a fleeting reflection of a woman in old-fashioned attire in the room's mirrors. Whispers amongst the staff linked these mysterious occurrences to Elizabeth. Could it be that her spirit, deeply attached to the hotel she so loved, continued her duties from beyond the grave? While some guests sought out room 217 for the thrill of possibly encountering Elizabeth Spectre, others requested a change of rooms, unnerved by the idea of sharing their space with the unseen. Regardless of individual beliefs, Elizabeth Wilson's legacy and the mysterious happenings of room 217 became intertwined creating a legend that would be spoken of for generations to come. Among the ornate ceilings, intricate woodwork, and opulent carpets of the Stanley Hotel, the sound of innocent merriment began to emerge as a recurring theme. The fourth floor, originally designed as a cavernous attic to house the children of guests and their nannies, took center stage in this enigmatic narrative. Over the years, the once joyful sounds of children playing, which resonated freely during the hotel's early days, transformed into spectral echoes. Guests frequently reported hearing the unmistakable sounds of little feet scampering down the corridors at odd hours. Hushed whispers and the soft bounce of a ball became auditory signatures, even when no children were checked in. Okay, everyone, now before moving to part two, Please remember to hit that like button so the video could be shared with other people as well and support the channel at the same time. And now, let's get on with part two. One tale tells of a couple who, having been woken by the sound of laughter, peeped outside their door to find the shimmering apparition of two young children playing in the hallway, only to see them fade away before their eyes. Another guest recounted an instance where, upon returning to their room, they found a trail of small, wet footprints leading from the bathroom to the window, as if a child had taken a bath and wandered around. Yet the room had been locked, and no one else had access. Some theorized that these playful spirits might belong to children who visited the hotel long ago and left behind an imprint of their most joyous moments. Others wonder if there might be a deeper, untold story, perhaps of young souls, seeking the warmth and safety of a place they once loved. Nannies who once cared for these children weren't left out of the tales. On occasion, guests would report a soft lullaby wafting through the air, its source untraceable, as if an unseen caretaker was trying to soothe the restless young spirits. The fourth floor's eerie yet innocent manifestations further deepened the Stanley Hotel's paranormal tapestry, painting a picture of a time gone by, where joy, play, and perhaps a hint of longing echoed in its corridors. Flora Stanley was not just the wife of the hotel's founder, Freeland Oscar Stanley. She was the hotel's heart and soul. A woman of elegance, grace, and immense talent, Flora's passion for music resonated deeply with all who had the privilege of hearing her play. Her beloved Steinway piano, housed in the main parlor, was her companion, and together they filled the halls with beautiful melodies that evoked emotions ranging from joy to melancholy. However, as the years after her passing rolled on, guests and staff began to witness a phenomenon that defied logic. On quiet evenings, especially when the moon cast a silvery glow over the Rockies, the gentle strains of piano music would waft through the hotel. Those who ventured to investigate would find the piano keys moving on their own, playing some of Flora's favorite pieces. Yet, no one sat on the bench. Some lucky few even claimed to have glimpsed the ethereal figure of a woman, her form bathed in a soft luminescence, seated at the piano. As quickly as she appeared, she would fade, leaving behind only the lingering notes of her music. 
Word spread of Flora's spectral serenades. Some speculated that her deep connection to the piano and her love for the hotel tethered her spirit, making her return to play her cherished instrument. For others, it was a comforting thought that Flora, even in the afterlife, chose to share her musical gift, filling the hotel with her presence. Old staff members recalled how Flora would often play to soothe guests during their stay or to bring life to the many grand parties the hotel hosted. Her performances were said to be so enchanting that they'd leave listeners spellbound. Today, the Steinway remains an integral part of the hotel's legacy. Though it stands as an artifact of a bygone era, the tales of Flora's phantom recitals serve as a testament to her undying passion for music and the Stanley Hotel's magnetic pull on those who've loved it deeply. In the late 1970s, the Stanley Hotel, with all its history and whispered ghost stories, was about to get a guest whose visit would change its trajectory forever. This guest was none other than the master of horror himself, Stephen King. Having completed a series of book tours, King sought refuge and inspiration in the tranquility of the Rockies. He checked into the Stanley Hotel on an evening when it was preparing to shut down for the winter. With its grand rooms and corridors mostly empty, there was an eeriness to the atmosphere. An almost palpable feeling of isolation, King and his wife were allocated the infamous Room 217. As night fell and the winds outside whispered secrets of their own, King experienced a series of dreams, or rather nightmares, that would serve as the catalyst for one of his most renowned works. He dreamt of his young son running through the hotel's endless corridors, being chased by a sinister force. The vividness and terror of this dream jolted him awake. Sitting in the dim light of the room, the skeleton of a story began to form in his mind. That story would evolve into The Shining, a novel about a writer who, along with his family, becomes the winter caretaker of an isolated hotel. The hotel, influenced by malevolent supernatural forces, exerts a sinister influence over the writer, leading to a descent into madness. While King's Overlook Hotel is a fictional entity, the parallels between it and the Stanley are undeniable. The maze-like hallways, the grand ballroom, the isolation, all drew heavily from King's brief but impactful stay. When Stanley Kubrick adapted The Shining into a film, the Stanley Hotel's reputation grew even further. It became not only a must-visit for paranormal enthusiasts, but also for fans of King and the cinematic masterpiece. The hotel embraced this newfound fame, even hosting film screenings in its auditorium. Through King's lens, the Stanley Hotel was immortalized, not just as a historical luxury resort, but also as a labyrinth of psychological and supernatural intrigue. The real and fictional stories became so intertwined that it became almost impossible to tell where one ended and the other began. As the Stanley Hotel's paranormal reputation grew, it began to attract not only curious guests, but also those with a more professional interest in the supernatural. Among them were parapsychologists, spiritual mediums, and ghost hunters, all keen to unravel the mysteries that the hotel seemed to shroud. One consistent theme that emerged from their investigations was the presence of multiple energy vortexes within the hotel. Vortexes, in paranormal lore, are swirling centers of energy, concentrated in specific places, where the spirit and physical worlds are believed to intersect. They can act as doorways for spirits, and are often associated with heightened paranormal activity. The Stanley's most potent vortex was believed to be located in its grand staircase, an opulent construct of polished wood and intricate carvings. Multiple guests, unaware of the staircase's reputation, reported seeing apparitions or translucent figures on the stairs, often captured in photographs as orbs or unexplained streaks of light. Another noted vortex lay in the concert hall. A hub of social activity during the Stanley's heyday, it had borne witness to countless performances, gatherings, and personal stories. 
Researchers speculated that the sheer amount of emotional energy expended in this space might have contributed to its vortex-like nature. EVP, electronic voice, phenomenon. Recordings taken here often picked up unexplained voices, music, or even the clinking of glasses, as if from a party long past. Paranormal investigators were especially intrigued by the combination of the hotel's natural setting and its energy centers. The Rockies, with their ancient stones and flowing water sources, have long been believed to exude powerful energies of their own. Some theorize that the location of the Stanley, nestled amidst these mountains, might have amplified its supernatural resonance. As stories of these vortexes spread, the Stanley Hotel began to organize guided spirit tours, leading intrigued visitors through the most paranormally active parts of the hotel. These tours often ended with guests sharing their own eerie experiences, further cementing the hotel's reputation as a hotbed of otherworldly activity. The heart of any grand hotel is often its ballroom, and the Stanley was no exception. The McGregor Ballroom, named after a prominent early settler in the Estes Park region, was a grand spectacle of opulence and design. With its sprawling space, gleaming hardwood floors, crystal chandeliers that dangled like stars from the high ceiling, and tall windows that framed the majestic Rockies outside, it was the very essence of luxury and class. Over the years, the McGregor Ballroom had been the venue for countless grand events, from Roaring Twenties parties, where flapper dresses swirled in time with jazz, to elegant soirees, where the waltz reigned supreme. The laughter, conversations, and music from such events seemed to have left an indelible mark on the ballroom. Guests often spoke of odd occurrences within this vast space. Some reported hearing the faint strains of music, like an old-time waltz, playing without a discernible source. Others spoke of seeing couples in period clothing, gliding across the floor in a dance, their feet making no sound, their forms slightly transparent. A particularly chilling tale was of a midnight explorer, a guest who sneaked into the ballroom outside of operational hours. Bathed in the soft moonlight filtering through the windows, he claimed to have seen a grand party in full swing, men in sharp tuxedos and women in flowing gowns, all dancing and laughing. Yet, the entire scene was enveloped in an eerie silence. As the guest stepped closer, the entire vision faded away, leaving the ballroom empty and bathed in stillness. Photographs taken within the ballroom sometimes showed oddities as well, orbs of light, inexplicable shadows, and on rare occasions, faint outlines of figures that hadn't been present when the photo was taken. Historians and enthusiasts delved into the ballroom's past, trying to uncover any specific events that might have led to such hauntings. While no singular event was identified, the consensus was that the sheer magnitude of emotions and memories associated with the ballroom had left a psychic imprint, allowing glimpses into its rich past. For many, a visit to the Stanley wasn't complete without a stop at the McGregor Ballroom, hoping to catch a fleeting moment of its eternal dance, a waltz that defied the boundaries of time. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Please make sure before you leave to hit that like button so the video could be shared with other people as well. And now I will see you in the next video. Peace.